after a long time seeing you again even uh, not seeing you guys for just two days makes these uh, you know times really hard i feel that i have not seen you for a long time i don't know whether you guys also feel the same thing well today is the first lecture of current electricity and uh, we're going to start with different parameters like current density current uh, and then drift speed and then field and then resistance and ohm's law all of this with me shreyas your master teacher for physics at vedanta going live hello hi shreyas kapri music stories rajni sakshi mr zeg hi sonu hi pl hello samuel hello munna bhai hello priyanka hello minyan aarti good evening guys this is shreyas here your master teacher for physics at vedanta going live and uh, many of you know about me some of you do not know about me some of you might be very new to this channel first of all welcome to this channel this is an english medium channel focused for all the 11th 12th and even the dropper students who want to write the examination maybe this year or maybe later on and we over here not only conduct regular classes but also give you motivational tips motivational sessions strategy sessions and special sessions like the one i conducted on saturday and the one before that so i hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, i hope you guys want more of it hi sri devi hi manas hi ashwarya gandhi hi adarsh hi rishab hi joker zara what a name joker zara wow hi nancy okay so guys by the way to show your support and love do not forget to actually change your display pictures you can change your display pictures by downloading a picture which is there in the description box there is a link click on that change your display picture to show your love and support and yes do not forget to hit the like button before we begin our class hi janath hello arvind arora motivation is also here oh my god arvind arora motivation is asking me to cut my hair sorry boss not happening because lockdown you know <laughs> hi anket hi suditi uh, so how are you guys i am very good i am very good uh, <laughs> so how many lectures will i take well kumara you will find out but uh, there will be a good number of lectures at least some four to five lectures will be there i guess yeah plus we are also going to have menti quiz that's the best part about pathfinder series after every one every one chapter we are going to have a menti quiz to test your concepts that's what we are going to do so sonu roy i am from uh, maharashtra but right now settled in karnataka okay so a lot of you are excited and uh, a lot of you want to know a lot about current electricity so let's begin yes guys do not forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button if you are new to the channel and remember the entire pdf will be available in the telegram group below yes so please check it out and by the way this is the schedule for this week so check it out guys yeah this is the schedule for this week so we are going to start with current electricity and we are going to have the second lecture of current electricity on um, 19th of may 7:30 all my lectures are at 7:30 the zero to hero series will be at 9 o'clock and then on tuesday and thursday we are going to have the 11th standard classes and also there is going to be a menti quiz for the 11th standard class on uh, you know uh, friday yes oh, sorry thursday my bad and uh, we are going to have the third lecture of pathfinder series on friday and saturday a special session what do you guys think who am i going to get what am i going to do any guesses no guesses well don't worry keep guessing and uh, well i was just reading all your chats my god you guys had a lot of fun in the chat box that's all i can say on saturday i mean you guys are crazy you uh, i mean uh, i was just reading you all your chats and all those comments and all that you guys are next level you can probably intimidate any person on earth uh, hats off you uh, i mean you guys are super duper dons yes yes shweta look at that evil laughter shreyas kapri minan arti hi rakesh yadav you're from shays for his public school welcome aboard rakesh okay so is this uh, oh you have this chapter for the exam mr zerg don't worry it will take some time for actually me to uh, complete this chapter and guys yes don't worry we are going to lay the foundations of all the chapters hi shani hi papi reddy welcome aboard and um, yeah a lot of people have made a lot of new friends capacitors will be done after this bharti don't worry okay so yeah we're going to do after that and guys remember there is also long term batch starting this next week on next monday there are also few long term batches which have started and uh, you know for your preparation of 12th standard with the test series uh, with assignments with tatva module 
we are the only coaching institute which actually gives Tatva module which is like a hard copy module of all the chapters along with micro courses and video solutions and so many other things plus there is my batch also of 12th standard which has started so guys you can also get into it if you work hard for it so guys please check out the pro subscription link which is there in the description box below because you know uh, the reason why I can talk about it so confidently and the reason why I always tell you is because Vedanta students have constantly outperformed other students if you check the results outside Vedanta and inside Vedanta look at the performance difference like for example the 12th standard marks people scoring about 90 percent in Vedanta is 69 percent but outside it's 13 percent so I'm guaranteeing you I mean I'm very sure about this like you guys entering into the pro subscription if you want take it up for one month is going to create this difference and I want to see the difference in you so that you can take up my micro courses Shimon sir's micro courses those assignments you can solve those test series you can get yourself enrolled into different kinds of programs all for free get your doubts solved so that's the reason why I talk about you know the pro subscription and there are three different packages the light version uh, which has everything uh, but it does not have the doubts so if you want doubts you get the classic version and then if you want uh, the personal mentor then you can go for the plus version you can try it out for at least one month for hardly 3000 rupees it's not much and you can use my coupon code SHHPRO for getting more discount okay so with this let's start with our first um, slide and I hope you guys are ready uh, yeah, uh, Venkata Krish this is the right time in fact you are already little bit late so before it gets even more delayed please join the long term batch see it doesn't matter whether you are joining Vedantu whether you are joining some other institute but as an absolute on an absolute time scale it's already late so my advice is please join a long term batch as soon as possible before you know you realize oh my god I missed so many classes so it's too late and all that okay now um, let's begin hi Sakshi I'm very good thank you so much uh, yes there will be a dropper, droppers batch for English as in English medium as well even the long term batches there are in English separate and Hindi separate so there are two different kinds of batches Vijay Kumar I'm very good I hope you're good too Vijay Kumar now see guys last time or before this we have spoken about charges inside conductor and whenever we talk about charges like the free electrons inside a conductor they were stationary they were not moving why were they not moving because there was no field and there was no potential difference there was no reason for those charges to move on an average their displacement was zero on an average their velocities were zero on an average they maintained their positions because there was no force on them they were just moving at their own place they would probably moving like this probably yeah they were just moving like this on an average their velocity was zero they were not having any net displacement but now you give them a reason to move you ask them hey why don't you start slowly moving towards that side you can take your stroll you can just move randomly no problem you move randomly but you keep slowly drifting here and there and slowly move in one particular direction now what would be that reason for charges to actually start moving what would be that force to drive these free electrons inside a conductor to actually move the reason for that force can be only field remember these are charges and the only thing which can apply a force is an electric field and when can you create an electric field when you create a potential difference when there is a difference in potential I hope you remember electric field goes from higher potential to the lower potential so the moment you create a potential difference these charges begin to move just look at this look at this look at this this is positive potential higher potential and that will be lower potential say for example so based on that you will see the charges will start moving if there is no potential difference these electrons stay there but the moment you create a potential difference you will see the charges begin to move you can see that right now the charges are moving one side you reverse the potential the charges move towards the other side but there is no potential difference then the charges on an average maintain their position is that clear everybody is clear about this yes if you are moving to 12th exactly Sonu this Pathfinder series is for all the uh, 11 to 12th moving students yes this is exactly 
ऋषभ आई डू नॉट टीच टू हिंदी मीडियम स्टूडेंट देर आर अदर टीचर्स एज वेल सो वी हैव सेपरेट बैचेस नाउ वन थिंग पर्टिकुलरली आई वॉन्ट यू टू ऑब्जर्व ओके वन थिंग आई वॉन्ट यू टू पर्टिकुलरली ऑब्जर्व लुक एट दिस गाइस दिस इज पॉजिटिव दिस इज हाई पोटेंशियल ओके दिस इज हाई पोटेंशियल दिस इज लो पोटेंशियल सो विच डायरेक्शन विल द फील्ड बी दिस इज हाई पोटेंशियल दिस इज लो पोटेंशियल विच डायरेक्शन विल द फील्ड बी द फील्ड विल बी इन दिस डायरेक्शन करेक्ट ऑलवेज फ्रॉम द हायर टूवर्ड्स द लोअर पोटेंशियल नाउ फ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर नेगेटिव चार्जेस सो इफ फील्ड इज योर वॉट डायरेक्शन विल द फोर्स बी ऑन इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इफ फील्ड इज टूवर्ड्स योर राइट ऑन द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स वॉट डायरेक्शन विल द फोर्स बी कम ऑन थिंक अबाउट इट हाई आयुष्मान कुमार वेलकम अबोल्ड welcome 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 all the new minions all the new warriors come on welcome which direction will the force be it will be towards right side or left side yes exactly towards the left side so the force on the electrons will be towards the left side so that means the motion of the electrons the motion of the electrons will be towards your left side yes so this is high potential this is low potential so electrons will go from low potential to high potential negative charges will go from low potential to high potential so whenever you create potential difference the negative charges go from low potential to high potential but isn't it matlab uh, isn't it equivalent to say if negative charges go this side it's as good as or equivalent to say that positive charges are going this side positive charges are going this side if negative charges come this way it's as good as saying an equivalent amount of positive charges went that way so hence can i say an equal amount an equivalent amount of positive charges are going actually from higher potential to lower potential i hope this is clear yes navami you are little bit late a little bit late but it's okay you can rewind the session little bit and you can catch up at 2x speed okay so let's quickly recap what we did whenever you have charges free charges like electrons inside a conductor they are at rest they are not moving as such they are just relatively maintaining their position but the moment you create potential difference there is field the moment there is field there is force but that force will push the electrons on one side from low to high which is as good as saying the positive charges are moving from high to low potential that's what this is all about you can see that you can check this out yes very good rashmi you have understood hi shivani welcome aboard yes uh no abhinav it's not a giveaway session it's a special guest hopefully okay i don't know okay now let's define current what is current current is nothing but uh you know the rate of flow of charge many many happy returns of the day mr zog i hope you do really well and god bless you and i hope you do really well in this next year and you do academically also very well all the best my dear child so current is nothing but the rate of flow of charge so whenever charges flow how much charge flows per unit time is nothing but current so remember one thing current's direction is the flow of positive charges so if electrons go towards your right side it's equivalent to say positive charges are going towards your left side so electrons go that side that means current goes towards your left side keep this in mind current is the flow of positive charges the conventional direction of current is the direction of the flow of the positive charges guys tell me one thing tell me one thing is current a vector quantity or a scalar quantity well current has a direction if electrons are going there positive charges are going here equivalently that means current is going here but it is not a vector quantity in spite of having you know a direction it is still a scalar quantity lot of people get confused over here the reason for that is because it does not follow laws of vector addition yes it does not follow laws of vector addition i'll give you an example so say for example you know you have four, uh, three amperes of current coming from here and you have you know 4 amperes current coming from here 3 amperes from here 4 amperes from here there is a wire which comes out from here so 3 amperes and 4 amperes will give you how much 3 amperes and 4 amperes will give you how much 3 plus 4 7 amperes that's it but if this was a vector quantity then 
the answer would have been 3 square plus 4 squares root. It is definitely not equal to root of 3 square plus 4 square like how you would do for forces. Force 1, force 2, 90 degrees. So the net force is F1 square plus F2 square. No, it doesn't work here. So it's a scalar quantity. You just add the magnitudes. You do not worry about the directions between them. Very good. Yes, I hope you understand this. So current is basically a scalar quantity. Now, how do I exactly define current guys? So like I said, it is the rate of flow of charge. That means current, okay, current is nothing but the charge which flows divided by the time which is taken. Now that charge, that charge could be the number of electrons, number of electrons multiplied by the charge on an electron as well. I hope you understand this. The charge which flows will be number of charges into charge of each electron. So charge of each electron multiplied by the number of charges uh, is uh, the numerator and divided by time will give you the current. So the strict definition is dq by dt, rate of flow of charge, rate of flow of charge. That's the definition of current and charge is in coulombs, time is in seconds. So one coulomb second is one ampere. So when one coulomb of charge flows in one second, that is called as one ampere of current. Now that's a huge value of current. Is that clear? Hi, happy cube, welcome aboard. Yes. Is that understood everybody clear till this point? If everybody is clear till this point, go smash that like button down there and say yo in the chat box. Yes, I hope this is fine. So dq is the small charge, dt is the time, rate of flow, rate of anything, rate of change of momentum, dp by dt. Rate of change of velocity, dv by dt. Rate of flow of charge, dq by dt. So current is the rate of flow of charge. Remember current has a direction and the direction is always in the flow of positive charges. The direction is always in the flow of positive charges. Okay, great. Having said this, let's define one more new quantity. Let's define one more new quantity. Hello, Dongle. Hello, Saloni. Hello, Vijay Kumar. Yes, welcome aboard. Now, how much current flows in an area? That quantity which describes, you know, whether large current is flowing through a small area or small current is flowing through a large area, the density of current, how dense is that current? Are lot of charges flowing through a small area? Then the current is very dense. Are very few charges flowing through a large area? then the current is very less dense. So that is current density. How much current flows per unit area is called as the current density. It's the current flowing per unit area uh, in the direction of the flow. And the unit is basically ampere per meter square. And this is a vector quantity. Yes, this is a vector quantity. Remember that. And the direction of this vector quantity is along the direction of the current. So if current is going there, current density is also going in that direction. Keep this in mind. So first of all, let's define what's the symbol. By the way, the symbol used for current density is J. Current density is J. And this value J is nothing but current per unit area. Like I said, it's the current flowing per unit area. So the unit, the unit of J will be ampere per meter square. I hope this is fine. So this is the first way of looking at this formula. Now I know many of you might be wondering, sir, current density is a vector quantity. So can you give me a vector equation for this? How many of you can quickly write down the vector equation? Think about it. Thank you, Sakshi, so much. Can you guys think about it? Yes. Can you think what would be the vector equation look like? Well, I'll give you a hint. See guys, area is a vector quantity area okay so if this is an area area all right area is a vector quantity you have seen that even in Gauss's law this is area vector area vector is always perpendicular I hope you remember this and there might be and there might be current which is flowing like this maybe the current is flowing like this this is current so this is the current okay so the current density is remember always in the direction of current 
current density is always in the direction of the current. So guys, you know, you can rearrange this equation and it works like this. Yes, it is a vector quantity. So if you actually rearrange it, it comes out to be J dot A. So this is actually the better way of writing this equation. J dot A, J vector dot A vector. This reminds me of force dot displacement is work. So it's very similar to that. So current is current density dot area vector. Remember this, remember this. This is very easy to remember. Okay, J dot A because J is current by area. That's it. So move it around. So J dot A. Now you can guess why this would be correct because just think about it guys. If I tell you my area vector, okay, this is my area vector and my area vector is like this. If this is my area vector and I tell you that, you know, the current is flowing in this direction, J is in this direction. So think about it. What is the angle between area vector and J vector? What's the angle? angle between the area of cross section and the current vector j vector it is 90 degrees if it is 90 degrees what will be the dot product so think about it what is the angle the angle is 90 degrees so what will be j vector dot area vector it will be zero it will be zero now the moment it is zero what it means is current is zero and it is true it is true that the current is zero through this area because if current is flowing horizontally, area is like that, how much current is flowing through the cross section? Nothing. Zero. Current density vector is here. Area of cross section is like that. How much current is flowing in the direction of area? Nothing at all. That's what this equation is telling me. I hope now it is clear. Saloni Baroria, my name is Treyas. But people call me Captain Strayers. I don't know why. Okay, so that's what current density is. Let's solve some basic questions so that you get some idea. And then we'll move on to some better questions as well. Find the number of charges flowing through a cross section if 1.6 amperes of current flows for 10 seconds. How much charge flows? All right, in 10 seconds, if the current is 1.6 amperes and also figure out the current density if the cross section is this much. Yep, let's have a look at it. Okay, let's do this one by one. First of all, here is the thing. Find the number of charges flowing through a cross section. I think I should go to this formula. Current is nothing but the charge which flows divided by time. But think about it, charge which flows is the number of charges multiplied by the charge of each electron, correct? Charge is number of charges multiplied by charge of each electron, that's the numerator. Now I think I know, now I think I know what to do next, current, I know the value, it's 1.6. N, oh that's what I need to find, E, I know is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 remember charge on an electron or a proton is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb that's what i have put over here divided by time is nothing but 10 seconds now you can quickly see what is going to happen 1.6 1.6 cancels out and you're going to get n is equal to 10 multiplied by oh that goes over there so 10 to the power 19 so n is nothing but 10 to the power 20 electrons. Gosh, that's a lot. 10 to the power 20 electrons have passed in just 10 seconds. Beautiful. Most of you answered. Very good, Minyan Arthi. Very good, Stanvi. Very good music stories. Abhinav. Very good, Shivani. Very good. Excellent. Now, I want the next thing and that is the current density. And we know that current density is the value of the current divided by area. So what is the current? Oh, it's just given over here 1.6. And what's the area? Be careful, it's in centimeter square. One centimeter square is one into 10 to the power, one into 10 to the power minus four. 10 to the power minus four, be careful, you're converting it to meter square. So hence it will become 1.6 into 10 to the power four. 
ampere per meter square and that's the final answer beautiful beautiful that's how you do it excellent let's do another question excellent warriors you have got the question correctly beautiful let's do another question and let's see whether you can do this in the absence of applied potential the electric current flowing through a metallic wire is zero makes sense when there is no potential difference then the current flowing through a metallic wire is nothing it's zero now which of the following explains this statement correctly which of the following statement explains this or it's justifying or it's telling uh, you know or supporting this statement the most appropriately come on think about it some of you are saying a most of you are saying is a very few people saying b okay come on minions come on my warriors think carefully read the question carefully are the electrons are at rest or the electrons are drifted in random directions or they move in random directions with speed of light or the electrons and ions move in opposite direction okay a lot of you are saying a very few people saying d interesting well krishna mohan is correct the correct answer is b beautiful yes beautiful i'll show you that uh, animation which i just uh, you know use at the start of the lecture and there we go look at this electrons inside a conductor they are moving randomly remember i just demonstrated i'm just strolling here and there i'm just strolling here and there there is no net displacement there is no net velocity average average motion is zero it's not that the electrons are at rest on an average the electron is at the same position understand only when you apply potential difference then the electrons slowly move randomly but you will see that there is a net motion you will see that there is a net motion just like the one over here they keep moving randomly but also they keep moving from one side to the other that's what happens understand yes a lot of you got it wrong okay happens that's why i give you this question okay no problems let's get going to the next one in fact this leads us to what exactly are the different speeds inside current electricity now me krishma i'm from maharashtra but i'm from right now in pune yep yeah that's how it is but i was born in tamil nadu it's a very interesting story maybe some day i'll tell you okay so what is the speed of electricity a lot of you might have this question so how fast does that electricity travel sir okay let's answer this first thing the speed of an electron and this is very important how much do you think is the speed of an electron how fast do you think the electrons move inside your conductor any guesses well let me tell you it's typically up to 10 to the power 5 10 raised to 5 10 raised to 5 up to that that's the speed of electrons inside a conductor that's like around 1 lakh meters per second yeah yep yeah. correct that's how it is and that's very fast but you cannot see it they're very tiny they won't hit you they won't damage you they're very tiny mini inside the conductor but remember one thing the average velocity is zero do you get that do you do you understand why the average velocity is zero see the electrons might be moving at 10 to the power 5 meters per second but they are at the same place it's like there is a crazy pandu there is a crazy pandu in the house locked down in the lockdown and this pandu is getting so nervous he keeps moving around the house but he's inside the house his average velocity is zero another pandu in another house locked down that pandu is also moving randomly inside the house average velocity zero he's having speed but on an average it is zero i hope this is clear is that understood is that understood everybody understanding this concept so average speed is not zero average velocity because velocity is always displacement divided by time and the displacement is zero average so the average displacement is zero that's why average velocity is zero keep this in mind beautiful abhinav beautiful rajni excellent emayank excellent samir excellent navmeel sraslin gukri kirat singh 
very good saloni very good munavai i'll be also moving like that in the lockdown continues yes munavai tell me about it i am already frustrated you know guys what i did today i ordered two truffles cake now the non bangalorean janta might not know what is truffles but all the bangalore people know this truffles is like amazing with their pastries and their fast food and all that so you know i'm getting bored i don't know what to do i ate few mangoes then i ate some lollipops and then i was like what else do i do okay let me order few truffles cake and then i ordered those and that's also done now i don't know what else to do <laughs> how are you guys spending your time are you guys also getting bored at least i am getting irritated sitting at home but you know there is nothing else we can do right i mean we have to stay at home i mean lives are more important than roaming around okay now music stories has his mouth watering i guess truffles is there everywhere in kormangla and a lot of places actually <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> okay okay somebody is just playing free fire amol please don't play too much of free fire please watch our lectures okay chalo speed of electricity now this is the most important thing this is equal to almost the speed of light uh both mr zarg both cheese burst pizza oh my god who is this hungry person my god cheese burst pizza i'm going to eat you and probably everybody else is also going to eat you please change your name okay so basically this is the speed of electricity and moves really fast guys think about it the moment you turn on a switch the light turns on almost instantaneously it's like there is hardly any delay the moment you turn on the switch yeah the fan starts running turn on the switch oh the light starts running uh, it glows right so basically what happens is there is an instantaneous electric field setup inside the conductor an electric field travels at the speed of light so it's very quick almost instantaneous and the field inside the conductor is very quick all right next up now this is very important lot of people do not know this third speed in fact let me tell you many of the coaching institutes do not tell you about the three speeds they just tell you about this speed and they'll be like okay chalo let's go ahead so understand one is the speed of the electrons actual speed okay second is the speed of the field which is almost the speed of light the third one is while these electrons roam around they are slowly moving they are slowly moving they are slowly drifting you can see that so they are moving very fast but they are having some average displacement because there is a battery connected or there is a potential difference and that is called as the drift velocity now that drift velocity is very very less look at the values 10 to the power minus 6 to 10 to the power minus 3 meters per second is the average rate at which these electrons drift slowly inside the conductor as they collide between different atoms collide with each other and they slowly move because of the electric field understand that yes i hope this is clear i hope this is clear now there is a simple formula for remembering uh, the drift velocity and let's see what it is first of all remember current is equal to n v d e a now this is the formula this is the formula now let me tell you what each term is this is nothing but obviously the current flowing what is this this is this small n is the free electrons the free electrons per unit volume how many electrons are there per meter cube of that conductor the more it is the better the current the more is the uh, free charges available for conduction this vd well that's the drift velocity of course this itself is called as the drift velocity okay and this e is a standard value 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and what is this a that's nothing but the area of the cross section so area of that section is basically a now this is a very important formula and there is very easy way to remember this and especially hums the vaj see whatever i write you will have to see you will have to make notes but whatever is there on the screen will be available in the pdf okay so please don't spam bachcha first of all understand there is a very easy way to remember this remember all the gamers might probably know about this 
Nvidia is a graphics card company. Nvidia is a graphics card company. Our salon, you can look at the derivation in, you know, uh, what you say. And NCRT, number two, when you join the pro subscription course, we do all the derivations out there as well. Okay. Nvidia, yes, exactly, Mr. Zerg. Exactly. So, Nvidia is a graphics card company. If you remember that, you can remember this formula very easily. Current is Nvidia graphics card company. That's all you need to remember. Yep, beautiful. Yes, correct. So remember this, very important. And you can also rearrange this formula slightly by taking this area over here. So current by area will become J and J will become NVDE. So this is also the same thing. J is I by A is equal to NVDE. So one and the same thing, it's fine. It's okay. Yep, understand that. Okay, cool. So having said that, let's see whether you can solve this question. Compare the currents, current density and the drift speed at this section and at this section. Let's see how many of you can do this. Compare the currents. So compare the current at I1, I2. Compare the current density at J1, J2 and compare the drift speed at 1 and the drift speed at 2. More than, less than, equal to. What symbols are you going to put over here? Think about it. Okay, come on guys. Post all the three answers in the chat box. Post all the three answers in the chat box. Come on, come on, come on. So, Unkit 2003, the PDFs are available in the description box below. After the lecture is over, after some time, not immediately, but it takes some time to get uploaded. Number two, in our Telegram channel. So, if you join the Telegram channel, you can download it very easily. Okay, so Lizzie, like you can see, I, I hope you can read the scrolling text. This is for J2022 aspirants and I hope you can read this also here. Pathfinder 2022. So it's for 2022 J aspirants. Okay, cool. Correct. Come on, come on. Let's see. Let's see how many of you can do this. Hello, Jyoti, Priya. Welcome aboard. Saloni Bhadoria, my Instagram ID is also mentioned out here. Yeah, that's Shreyas underscore Vedantu. You can ping me over there and get all your doubts resolved. Definitely. Okay, so some of you have started answering. Well, guys, I'll tell you what. See, whatever current flows through here will also flow through here. This is like fluids. I don't know, whatever you have studied in 11th standard, probably you should be able to remember this. Probably you should be able to remember that. So whatever charges flow through here should obviously flow through here, undoubtedly. How can some charges disappear or appear magically? So obviously this is equal. Like this is obvious, like this is uh, probably similar to fluids, what you have studied in 11th standard. Next up, next up, understand J1 and J2, oh, J1 and J2, this was supposed to be J2, my bad, J1 and J2, yeah. Now, here the area is less, here the area is more. Remember, J is current by area. So if area becomes large, J becomes less. So J2 will become less than J1. Because more area, bigger denominator, smaller j. Correct? Oh, beautiful. I hope this is clear. Understand, it is not more than, it is less than. J2 is less than. Next up, next up, drift speed. Oh, for drift speed, I just give you a formula. J is equal to N V D E. That A was there downstairs. So current by area is N V D E. So think about it. N is the same. No matter where you go, number of free electrons per unit volume e is also constant. So drift velocity is dependent directly on j. So if j is less, even drift velocity will become less. If j is more, even drift velocity will become more. And hence, the answer for that will be same as the answer for the above one. And hence, I should put this symbol. I hope this is clear. So Saloni, basically the funda is Remember current is same because whatever charges flow from here should also flow from here. Current cannot decrease because it has become big. From a small wire when current goes through a big wire, understand current does not become less. The current density becomes less. Current remains the same. So that's why as soon as it goes into a bigger cross section, the current per unit area becomes less. That's the funda. And for drifts velocity, use this formula. Current is NVDR and take that area below. So you'll get J is equal to NVDE. Now we know N is same, E is same. So whatever happens with J will also happen with drift velocity. I hope this is fine. Yes, I hope this is clear. Everybody understood 
everybody understood yes why they did not become big rashmi why will it become big because charges cannot be created or destroyed that's why so whatever so if let's say this was a highway okay just imagine this was a highway and the road becomes big if 100 cars are moving here how many cars will be moving here obviously 100 unless the cars are magically disappearing or magically appearing from somewhere if 100 cars cross this point they should also cross the other point i hope now it's clear yep correct the law of conservation yes yes i hope now it's clear everybody clear with this concept everybody understanding this question i hope i have explained this question in detail and i hope all the pointers about uh, you know drift velocity current density and current are clear this is a very important question glad you understood saloni sachinandan sakshi abhinav arsalan rashmi very good very good priyanka very good malamohan excellent okay let's see whether you can solve this question coming up on your screen now come on let's see this question beautiful question a current of 3 amperes is flowing in a copper conductor okay with a cross section of this much how much is the drift velocity if the number of free electrons per unit volume is given to be 8.5 into 10 to the power 28 now now think which formula will you use Come on guys, come on, type it out. Which formula are you going to use? NVIDIA graphics card. Yes, that's the formula that you're going to use. So let's start with that formula out here. So current is equal to NVD, okay, E into A. That's the formula we're going to use. Let's see which all terms we know. Do I know the current? Yes, it is 3 amperes. I know that. Do I know the value of N? Yes, I know it. It is 8.5 into 10 to the power 28 okay drift velocity okay that's exactly what i have to find out so i'll just keep it as an unknown multiplied by e e is nothing but 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 multiplied by a area is 1 millimeter square come on guys 1 millimeter square is how much 10 to the power minus 6 1 millimeter is 10 to the power minus 3 meters so millimeter square is 10 to the power minus 6 beautiful so now just rearrange it you will get the drift velocity so drift velocity will be 3 divided by this entire numbers 8.5 multiplied by 1.6 and then take all the powers of 10 10 to the power 28 and 10 to the power minus 19 and 10 to the power minus 6 so just do the math and you will get the approximate answer to be any guesses yes rashmi prashti the pdfs will be provided in the telegram link which is there in the description box below so go check out the description box below you will be getting a telegram link you join the telegram group and the tele uh, in that group you will be posting the pdf the timetable the updates everything about whatever sessions we are conducting yes please do that okay yes so the correct answer is Ooh, come on 2.2 no 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 a lot of you got it wrong 2.2 approximately into 10 to the power minus 4 meters per second that's very small very slowly it moves yes check it out approximately this much yes 2.2 into 10 to the power minus yeah <coughs> that's the answer okay so try, just try it out just try it out yep just try it out okay so that's the answer yep that's the answer great great sir are my lectures helpful for both neat and j although malamohan this is an exclusive j channel but if you are a neat aspirant and if you are loving all these lectures please attend it because anyways the portions are same the type of questions are also similar for mains and neat only when i do j advanced question that will be higher than the neat questions obviously okay but mains and neat are almost similar just the pattern of the examinations is different okay but yeah if you want you can attend it but we are a j focused channel and um, one more thing i would like to mention guys a lot of you want uh, they keep messaging me on instagram sir can we ask doubts so guys understand it's not possible for me to solve all the doubts on instagram so i would request you to ask all the doubts by taking a screenshot of whatever problem you have or let's say you don't understand a concept or let's say you want to check whether the solution is correct or wrong please take a picture and send it on the doubt app of Vedantu inside Vedantu app itself there is an 
uh, functionality for asking any doubt that you have. You can chat with our doubt experts, unlimited doubts from morning till night. So we have doubt experts, you can chat with them, send all your doubts and get it answered. Yes, as many doubts as you want. Yes, inside the Vedantu app. So go check it out. Okay, now, yes, let's talk about the next topic out here. Thank you, Saloni. Thank you, Sakshi. Hi, Vijay, Vinay, Vana come, Vana come, Vana come. Yes. Uh, Mr. Zag, if you are a part of pro subscription, yes, it is free. Yep, yep, it is free. Thank you, Navami Krishna. Yes, who is this? Oham. Yes, very good. This is Mr. Oham. Yep, yep, yep. And very famous triangle, VIR triangle. Now I'll tell you what. Let you, I'll tell you what. Lot of people do not know Oham's law. Yes. And I'm pretty sure in next three minutes or five minutes, you'll be like, what the hell? Sir, my entire school life was a lie. You just opened my eyes. You are going to exactly feel that. Yes. Oham's law is not what you think. Yes, Oham's law is not what you think. A lot of people get this wrong. And I have seen this. And I have seen this. Okay. First of all, what Oham did is that he took any device. I don't know, some device. He passed some current, measured the voltage, measured the current. And then plotted a graph. Plotted a graph. For different voltages. He took two batteries, saw how much current flows. He took three batteries. What is the voltage? What is the current? He plotted a graph of voltage and current. And guess what? The graph came out to be like this. Voltage versus current. When he joined all those points for different voltages. Geeta Sharma will talk about transformers very soon when we discuss AC. Okay? But not now. So he found out the graph is a straight line. And then he said, okay, if it is a straight line, that means the voltage is directly proportional to the current. Come on, this is a straight line, of course. This is a straight line. So voltage is proportional to the current. And then that constant of proportionality, he called it R. And this R is nothing but the resistance. Now you might be like, oh, okay, so this is Ohm's law. Yeah, done, done, are done. But no, this is not Ohm's law. Understand that. Lot of people think Ohm's law is voltage is proportional to current. That's wrong. No. In fact, it's not necessary that voltage is proportional to current every time. If it is proportional to current, that kind of device is called as an Ohmic device. What is it called? It is called as an Ohmic device. But not all devices. Not all devices are ohmic. Diodes, transistors, and so many other things, inductors, capacitors, so many other things, you will see will not obey this law. You increase the voltage, current might increase, but not proportionately. Maybe, maybe the current and voltage have some weird function like this. This is obviously non-ohmic device. Voltage is not proportional to current. Yes. And then the Ohm's law gets modified as, let's say you have a non-Ohmic device. Let's say for example, this one, this blue graph that you see, let's say you measure the voltage and current. Example, you measure the voltage and current at some point. Let's say the voltage is two volts, current is, I don't know, one ampere example now using this relationship what will you get r is equal to v by i v by i it will give me two ohms ohm is the unit of resistance so two ohm is the resistance at this point yes two ohm is the resistance at this point if you take some other point if you take some other point let's say somebody takes this point somebody takes this point Let's say the current here is 4 amperes, example, okay? And the voltage here is 4 volts. If you measure resistance, which is voltage divided by current, you are going to probably get 1 ohm. What does this tell you? The resistance is not constant at different points along that curve. It's not a constant resistance, understand that. So that is what 
Ohm's law tells you, it gives you the definition, it gives you the value of resistance for a particular voltage and current. It defines the resistance. That's what Ohm's law is. It's not necessary voltage is proportional to current. Is that now understood? Yes. So voltage is proportional to current only for some devices, pure resistors. Those are called Ohmic devices, but semiconductors and capacitors, vacuum diodes and all that, they behave very differently. So that time, it will give you the value of the resistance at that voltage and at that current. Abhinav says, open my eyes. Very good. I'm glad I did that. So what is resistance? So, re so V is equal to IR. R depends on what? Yes, Sachinananda, I'm coming to that. Hold on, just give me some time. We are coming to that. So resistance is telling you how much is current blocked. More the resistance, the current gets choked. Less the resistance, the current is not choked. Current can flow very easily for a given voltage. That's the meaning of resistance. I hope this is clear. Yep. 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 I hope this is clear. I know Bichara, this guy, my God, how he's getting squeezed. You. How do you know whether it is ohmic or not? Samir Pen say very simple. Draw the graph. If voltage and current graph is a straight line, it's ohmic. If it is not, it is non-ohmic. As simple as that. Okay. And as you learn more and more topics, you will realize which are ohmic conductors and which are non-ohmic conductors also. Okay. Now, resistance. Electrical resistance is nothing but how much is the current opposed like the diagram just suggested. This is the symbol for resistance. Okay. This is a symbol for resistance and the unit is ohm. So one ohm is nothing but one volt upon one ampere. R is equal to V by I. So volts by amperes is nothing but an ohm. Yep. So it tells you how difficult it is for an electron. Look at these electrons. Bichara electrons. Look at that. Yes. Look at these electrons. Bichara, they are colliding with each other. They're vibrating. They have to hit each other. Loss of energy. Loss in collisions. Atoms are there in between. Other electrons come and hit and suck away all the energy. So there is resistance inside a conductor. That's what it is. Yep. I hope this is clear. Yep. Okay. Now, now, so Rashmi, I'll be coming for live class for 11th tomorrow. Don't worry. Yes, I'm going to come for uh, yeah, 11th standard kids tomorrow. Okay. Now let's see whether you can answer this question. Which of the following is true about Owen's law? Let's see how many of you are listening to my explanation and theory and the diagrams very carefully. Four options. Ma one or more options might be correct. Yes. Is R true? More than one option might be correct. Let's see how many of you can do this. Yes, Nia likes to move it, move it. Very good. Hi, MD South Parvez. Welcome aboard. Hi, Sujit Walke. Welcome. Okay, Rashmi Goel. Don't worry. I'm going to see you tomorrow. And all the 2021 aspirants, don't worry. I'm going to see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Morning, 9 o'clock, Zero to Hero series. Evening, 2023 and 2022 series, Pathfinder and Nurture. Out there. Okay, come on, come on, come on, guys. Some of you are saying D. Some of you are saying CD. BD. Oh, Mr. Zog, I'm not sure whether I'll be there by the time you come back. Uh, Shivani, next topic will be capacitors. After current electricity is over, current electricity itself is a big chapter. So after current electricity, I will take up capacitors. And don't worry, guys. Please have faith in me. I'm going to complete all the 12th chapters. Just have faith in me. Just follow my flow. You will get through it. Okay. A lot of you are saying BC. Well, that's wrong. It's BCD. Yes. I think Samir Pense answered it correctly. Very good. I don't know who else answered it correctly, but I can see Samir's name out there. Yep, correct. So basically, Ohm's law is not valid for semiconductor devices because they are non-Ohmic. As simple as that. Yes, it's not valid. Okay. Ohm's law gives us the definition of resistance. Exactly. R is V by I. It tells you, you know, the definition of resistance. For an ohmic device, voltage versus current graph is linear. Correct. For an ohmic device, obviously voltage is directly proportional to current, so it is linear. And A option is wrong. I'll tell you why. Voltage across any device is proportional to current. Wrong. Any device? No. Nah. Only ohmic devices, the voltage graph is straight line. Else it is not a straight line. Yeah, I hope this is clear. So semiconductor devices you will learn later on, but they are diodes, transistors, all these kind of devices, gates. These are basically semiconductor devices and you'll be learning it uh, very soon. But they are non-ohmic. Okay, just remember that. 
Okay, now some of you are asking, sir, what does exactly, you know, uh, resistance depend on? So experimentally, it has been found out that resistance is directly proportional to the length of the conductor. More the length, more the obstacles, more the obstacles that it will encounter. So higher is the resistance and it is inversely proportional to the area. Bigger the area, okay, if the area is big, then the electron has more options to go from. If the area is small, then it has less options to travel. So that's why it is inversely proportional. Now when you combine both these results into one single thing, it looks like this. R is equal to a constant, which is nothing but rho into L divided by A. This is the formula for resistance. R is rho L by A. L is length. Okay, I'll just mention it over here. This is nothing but the length and this is nothing but the area of that section like I've shown it over here. So what is this rho? This rho is called as the resistivity. This is the resistivity of the material. It's a constant for a material. Iron will have some value. Aluminium will have different value. Copper will have different value. Different materials, elements, compounds have different resistivity. It's a material property. It will be given to you or you will have to find it out based on other values which are given in the equation. Just understand that. Now just think about it. If something has more resistivity, it's a bad conductor or a good conductor. Answer in the chat box. Come on guys. I'm going to come. Hold on Krishna Mohan. When were you born? Chill. Take a chill pill. Hold on. Yeah. Yes. So if resistivity is more, it's a bad conductor. Beautiful. And the inverse of resistance, inverse of resistance is called as conductivity. So sigma is 1 by rho where understand this sigma is called as conductivity. Yes, this is conductivity. So conductivity is nothing but 1 by resistivity. More resistance, less conductive. Less resistivity, more conductance. As simple as that. You should remember this. Beautiful. Beautiful. Exactly. Now let me show you some values so that you get a hang of it. Look at these values. This tells you the resistivity of different materials. Oh, look at silver. Resistivity is 10 to the power minus 8. So many zeros, very small. Gold is also 10 to the power minus 8. Most of them are in the 10 to the power minus 8 region. But silver has very less resistance. Iron has little bit more resistance. When you go to semiconductors, you can see carbon, germanium, silicon. 10 to the power minus 5, 10 to the power minus 3 range. Insulators like glass and rubber, 10 to the power 12 huge difference so more resistance more resistivity bad conductor less resistivity good conductor like you can see from the table do you have to buy at this table no do you need to uh, know the rough values no just remember the power that's enough conductor 10 to the power minus 8 bad conductor insulator huge resistance huge resistivity 10 to the power 9 10 to the power 13 that's enough for you to remember and semiconductors in 10 to the power minus 5 10 to the power minus 3 if you remember these powers that's more than enough okay nothing more than this okay now does the resistance also depend on the temperature yep it does depend on the temperature and there is a very simple law now what happens is <coughs> hi naruto welcome okay if you increase the temperature then the electrons move more rapidly there are more collisions it's very difficult for an electron to pass through. So the resistance increases. So more temperature, more is the randomness, more are the thermal collisions, more is the difficulty, higher is the difficulty for an electron to pass by because it will collide more frequently and loss of energy is more. So, you know, resistance increases. So you can see if you have a cold wire and a hot wire, okay, in the cold wire, Okay, there you go. The resistance is less, more charges can flow. But in the hot wire, more agitation, more thermal energy, the electrons get blocked 
more and the current is also going to be less understand that so current will be less but you can see in the cold wire the electrons flow very easily that's what you can see out there okay so what's the formula for that the formula for that is simple resistance is r naught into 1 plus alpha delta t does this formula remind you of something my question is does this formula remind you of something and if it doesn't if it doesn't then probably you have not studied your 11th standard properly yes it should remind remind you of something okay shivani bye bye take care i'm not sure why okay yes thermal coefficient of expansion this is your initial initial resistance initial resistance delta t is your change in temperature this is your change in temperature this is your final resistance this is your final resistance and lastly this alpha is the coefficient of thermal resistance is the coefficient of thermal resistance keep this in mind yep so alpha tells you how quickly the resistance will change for changes in temperature if alpha is large then very quickly the resistance will change if alpha is small then in spite of you increasing the temperature by a large amount the resistance won't change much so exactly similar formula which was there in linear expansion of solids L final is L initial 1 plus alpha delta T. Please keep in mind, this alpha is not coefficient of linear expansion. This is coefficient of thermal resistance, resistance related. Yeah, that's how it is. Okay, so keep this in mind and let's see whether you can solve these questions coming up on your screen right away. There's a wire of resistance R stretched till the radius becomes half the original value. Then the resistance of the new stretched wire is, come on guys, think about it. Yo, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <clears throat> Sai Mandeep, I do remember you. Yes, I do remember you. <laughs> so don't uh, stop wondering. Yes, you're not a wonder woman. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Think, think, think. Oh, that was a bad joke, by the way. Anyways, come on, think, 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 guys. A wire of resistance R is a stretch till its radius becomes half. What do you think is the new resistance? All right, come on, think about it. <coughs> okay all right a lot of you are saying 4r some of you are saying yep b which is 4r let's figure it out let's figure it out okay a lot of you are saying b okay here is the logic the radius has been made half if original radius was r final radius will be r by 2 correct if original area was a what will be the final area? Tell me this. If original area was A, what will be the final area? Radius has become half. Do not forget area is pi r square. If radius becomes half, area will become one fourth. One fourth. Do not forget that. So it will be A by four. Okay, beautiful. So it will become one fourth because so pi r square r becomes half r square become one fourth times now if the length was l think about it think about it what will be the final length even the length will change now because the radius has become half area has become one fourth the logic is simple volume is area multiplied by length volume is area multiplied by length volume is constant Volume is constant, you stretch it, area reduces, length increases, obviously. So, if area becomes one fourth, length should become how many times? Four times to keep the volume constant. Four times, not two times, four times. Area into length is constant. Area into length is volume. Area becomes one fourth, length becomes four times. So, length has become 4L. Correcto. Now, think resistance is rho l by a Achha. if resistance is rho l by a length has become four times length has become four times area has become one by four times 
This has become four times. This has become one by four times. So this one by four, this four will go on the top. This, this is in the denominator. This is one by four. So this four will go on the top. Four fours are 16. How many times do you think the resistance will increase? Exactly, Richard Roy, 16 times. 16 times. So the new resistance should be 16R. Lot of people made mistakes. <sighs> Naruto wants to know that whether I watch anime and if he uh, hears my answer, then he will leave the class and go. Why Naruto? Why should he leave? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yes, correct. No problem, happens. That's why I did this question because I know a lot of people will do that question, uh, that, do that mistake. Okay, correct. Let's get going to the next one coming up on your screen and here we go. If you increase the temperature, what will happen with the current of a conductor connected across a cell? Come on, think about it. <clears throat> yes, Naruto ko to mein janta hun, but Naruto mere ko nahi janta. Like the anime character, but here in this case, I think we both know each other. Okay, yes, Simon Deep, literally two second question, but oh really? I don't know. It depends. Okay, come on, decreases A or B, remain same or none of these. Come on, my warriors, think, 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 think. Abhijit Akka Semiconductor. Wow, we have a semiconductor also out here. Very good. And his name is Abhijit. So I knew about germanium, I knew about silicon, but this is Abhijit Semiconductor. Very good. Okay, so guys, the answer is decreases. Beautiful. And the reason for that, yes, a lot of you got it correct. Because if you increase the temperature, the resistance also increases. Ohm's law, resistance increases current decreases. This is via Ohm's law. Okay, very good. Beautiful. So that's the answer. Excellent. Current decreases and that's the answer. Now the last part of today's topic and that is nothing but field inside a conductor. Now remember in electrostatics I have told you inside a conductor the field is zero because the charges are stationary. Nothing is moving but inside inside a conductor where current is moving, obviously the field is not zero. So this is a different chapter. This is not electrostatics. In electrostatics, field is zero. This is electrodynamics. Charges are moving. So guys, understand the field inside is not zero. Yep, and that's what we are going to see. Now, there is a very simple way of looking at this. Observe. I have told you about all this. Like when you create a potential difference, high potential, low potential, electric field is set up, high to low, and there is current, which flows obviously from high to low potential. That means there is current density, which remember current per unit area, vector quantity, always in the direction of current. So this is what is set up. Now observe this very carefully. V is equal to IR, correct? This is Ohm's law. This is Ohm's law. The definition of resistance is given through this equation. Now, now what will happen is just divide both sides by length. Yes, divide both sides by length. So R divided by L and just divide by area and then multiply by area. You'll be like, sir, why the hell are you doing it? You will see why I'm doing this. Now, what is voltage per unit length? I don't know whether you remember this. What is voltage per unit length? Do you remember field? is delta V by delta R magnitude wise. Field is delta V by delta R. Potential per unit distance. So that is E, correct. So this is nothing but E. What is this I by A? It's nothing but current density. So that's J guys. I by A is J. And one more thing. R is rho L by A. R was rho L by A. So shift it. R A by L will be rho, right? R A by L will be rho. So this term is also there. So this is going to become rho. And this is a very important equation. E is zero. E is zero. Yes, that is your equation. That gives you the value of the field inside a conductor. Very important. Current density into resistivity will give you the field inside a conductor which carries current. Beautiful equation. Beautiful equation. <clears throat> Charges will always move inside the conductor, not on the surface. 
Yes, they flow throughout the volume, throughout the cross section of that conductor. Okay, so remember this last equation before we go ahead. Last equation. Okay, now the equation is all about relaxation time and mobility. Now, what the hell are these two terms? I'll come to that. First of all, relaxation time is nothing but whenever these electrons move, they collide. When they collide, they take some time before the next collision. Then they again collide with the next electron or atom. So there is a time gap. The average time gap from one collision to next collision is called as the relaxation time. Like you can see over here. The average time between one collision to the next collision all right, is called as the relaxation time. <clears throat> and I'm going to give you the formula for that. And the next definition, mobility, you will see why it is defined like that. Mobility is nothing but the ratio of the drift velocity upon the electric field. Don't worry about this now. Just forget it. It's okay. Just observe this. First of all, remember this drift velocity is field into charge. All right. Field into charge. Okay. Divided by the mass of the electron into this tau. This is a very important equation. Now, I hope everybody remembers this. This is nothing but the drift speed. This is drift speed. This is the charge of the electron. This is the mass of electron. Keep this in mind. This is the mass of the electron. This is nothing but the field. This is nothing but relaxation time. Relaxation time. Yes, this is exactly what this is. So this formula relates drift speed and relaxation time. So if you know the drift speed, you can easily find the relaxation time. Very, very important. Yes. Uh, so Krishna Mohan says, is this derived from V's U plus AT? Now in your NCRT books, it has been derived using V's U plus AT, but that's the wrong derivation. That's why we do not do it here. The real derivation comes via statistical maths and analysis which needs, you know, the averages of all the velocities, accelerations and other things amongst, you know, the times and all that. So all those analysis is beyond the scope of J math syllabus and also obviously J physics syllabus. So that's why we do not have the derivation. But the derivation which is there in your NCRT books is very vague. It uses kinematic equations very nicely, very easily. But that's not the exact way of doing it. Okay, so be careful about it. So that's why I'm showing you the equation. Now, when you move around this equation a little bit, it will become like this VD by E. VD by E will become E by M into tau. Yes. Now this drift velocity by electric field, this one is called as mu. This is exactly what we needed. Okay, this is exactly what we needed. Okay, and this is basically your mobility of electrons. This is called as the mobility of your electrons. Remember this. Just shift this E over there. That's it. That's called as the mobility. Yes, this is the final one. Okay, last question. I hope you have written down these questions, uh, these equations, sorry. And uh, if you have written these equations down, let's go to the last one or two questions coming up on your screen. Yep. Uh, Daniel, bridge course is over, bacha. Now we have started the nurture course, 11th. I hope you are up to date. Bridge course is over. Nurture course has started. Nurture course will cover the 11th standard syllabus. Let's see whether you can solve this question quickly. Come on, all my warriors. When there is an electric current through a conducting wire, then electric field must exist. Where? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <coughs> Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, Richa, E is equal to rho j. That's correct. E is equal to rho j. That's correct. E is equal to rho into j. Yep. Okay. A lot of you have answered A. Some of you have answered C. Well, the correct answer is actually C. Inside the wire parallel to it. See guys, when you have an electrical wire like this, the field is parallel to the wire. This is the wire. The field is here. That's why the charges will move. The charges motion will be in the direction of the wire. Understand that not perpendicular or somewhere else and any other option out there. Yes, it is basically. Yep. It's basically 
parallel to the wire. Yes, the current flows parallel to the wire. So the field is also parallel to the wire. Last question coming up on your screen. Yes, come on, come on, think, think, think. The mean relaxation time of electrons inside a conductor varies with the temperature as which power? Come on, come on, think about it. How is, how is the relaxation time dependent on the temperature? Come on, think about it. Come on guys, waiting. Okay, a lot of you are saying B. Some of you are saying A. Ashwara is saying C. Okay. Think which formula are you going to use? Relaxation time guys. Okay, and resistance. Okay, first, uh, resistance is nothing but, think about it, resistance is nothing but voltage divided by current. Correct, voltage divided by current. And current, I've just given you the formula for current. I is equal to N drift velocity E into A. Remember, I have just given you this formula. And just some time back now, I gave you the formula for this drift velocity. For this drift velocity and relaxation time. What was that formula? Try and recollect. It was E, E by M into relaxation time. I hope you remember this was the formula I gave you for drift velocity. And that E is also there. And that A is also there. Just play around with this a little bit. You will get voltage divided by N and then you have E square and that M goes on the top and that E is also there here you are. and that A is also there here and then you have 1 by tau. So resistance is equal to 1 uh, something by tau. That's what it is. That's what it is. Now what you need to do, what you need to do is think carefully. Isn't resistance directly proportional to temperature? Isn't temperature and resistance? Remember, the more the resistance, more the temperature. Linear expansion of uh, temperature and resistance. I just gave you the coefficient. I just gave you the linear coefficient expansion, uh, sorry, linear coefficient of resistance, alpha. More the temperature, more the resistance and it is directly proportional. That's why this relationship holds true. That means temperature, that means temperature and relaxation time are inversely related to each other. Yes, so relaxation time is inversely related to temperature. And hence, the correct answer should be option A. Lot of you got it wrong. Lot of you got it wrong. Yep, T raised to minus 1. Area, area is a constant, right? For a given conductor. So it will be... Uh, a constant so you don't have to worry about it for a given conductor the voltage is there the field is there the area is there so understand that yeah so hence that's the answer t raised to minus one correct oh yep be careful okay now this is your homework question this is your first homework question you can take a screenshot and also the homework will be available for you to download in the telegram group below okay and this is your second question you can again take a screenshot post all the answers in the comment section below and let's see how many of you can do that. I always see how many people respond to all the homework questions we give. This is very important so that immediately you can brush up all the concepts and you're up to date with the current portion. So guys, post all the answers in the comment section below. And remember guys, for all the 2021 aspirants, there is also a crash course which will start on 17th of May. Yep, so on 17th of May, that is today. So exactly today a crash course is starting for all the 2021 aspirants all you need to do is when you go to our channel when you go to our channel <coughs> and when you click on any of our okay let me just pause okay when you go in the description box you can see there is a telegram group link there is this channel art link so that you can change your display pictures there is crash course there is pro subscription so when you click on the crash course you can see when the crash course is going to start, it's going to contain live classes, it's going to get uh, contain notes, it's also going to contain recordings, test series, discussions, doubt solving, doubt app, everything is there. So there is a crash course starting right now, today. Even if you are late by one day, it's okay, you can watch the recordings. And the crash course is not for 10,000, it is only for yeah 6,000 rupees, 40% off when you use this coupon code SHCC. 
SHCC when you use the coupon code you get 40% off and if you want the pro subscription that's the 12th standard course you get 10% off when you use the coupon code SHHPRO now what do you get in this you get basically the complete 12th standard course with revision KVPY course micro courses short term courses everything now the difference between the three is not the courses the courses are the same light version classic version and the plus version the only difference is basically whether you get the doubt app or not if you want the doubt app then you go for the classic version all right and if you want a personal mentor then you go for the plus version now the best part about this is you can even try it out for a month and you can also get the entire year subscription even at emi yes believe me you can even get the crash course in an emi for 2000 rupees yes the crash course at 2000 rupees this pro subscription at hardly 3 to 5000 rupees on an emi option now the reason why i'm telling you to go for an emi is because then you can you know have some easy cash flows and if you're having some constraints financially you can go for that you also get the hard copy tatwa material and whatever details are there the syllabus the timetable the batches etc every detail has been mentioned out here what is the timetable what is the schedule what are the things you're going to get the results we have produced through these courses out there so go ahead check it out guys i'll be waiting for all of you to see you in the crash course thank you guys very much for being here bye saluni bye nia bye shreyas kapri bye nancy bye, uh, bye Gita. bye simon deep bye samuel yes uh, yes bye bye ravish bye bye webo uh, so webo uh, whatever doubts you have why don't you send it to me on instagram or just post it below in the comment section i'll definitely reply to you bye music stories see you guys bye deep prasad bye navmi thank you so much for being here yes be healthy and be powerful and be uh, always cheerful guys and see you thank you so much thank you just sweep for all the love and support Thank you and do not forget to hit the like button and if you are new, do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Take care guys. Bye bye. See you. This was Shreyas here. Asa la vista.